fost tu, dragă trăguță, Mi-ai cerut ciora cu panglicuță, Și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea la tale, Să-ți cumpere neica și santale. Shalom. Shalom to you, David. Rabbi Asa, pleasure, an honor. My pleasure. Zdravei, bună ziua, shalom. Well, here we are on a gorgeous day, as they all are, in Fullerton, California, June 3rd, Monday afternoon, about 2.30. And uh, here we are speaking about a very important topic that I suggested to Rabbi Asa. Just want to mention, we're hosted in a beautiful home of my dear cousins, Ani and Bibi. Thank you. And uh, what I wanted to discuss today is something that perhaps every young person thinks or doesn't understand and needs a little bit of an introduction. How do good people become evil? So Rabbi Asa from Burgas, Bulgaria will try to explain to us with perhaps a short introduction. You mentioned something about a phone call, something very important happened today. Thank you, David. <clears throat> perhaps the subtitle of this segment of our conversation could be called The Banality of Evil. The Banality of Evil was written by Hannah Arendt about um, 50 years ago. Hannah Arendt. Hannah from? Uh, well, she was originally European, but American. American. Hannah Arendt. A R E N D T. Arendt. T like Thomas. Right. Arendt. And let me go for an hour back and talk about the phone call that right. I got. We had lunch together and the phone rang and it was I couldn't. It was a very good lunch. Rabbi Asa treated. And I couldn't understand who was calling, so. I asked him to call back and I went outside of the restaurant and I could hear better. It was a call from Skopje, Macedonia. Um, I was in Skopje 13 years ago and I brought a Torah scroll, Sefer Torah, from California to Skopje, to the Jewish community of Skopje, and the Torah was donated by the Pasadena uh, Jewish Community Center and Rabbi Gil Collins, C-O-L-L-I-N-S, was the person that uh, gave me the Torah to take to Skopje. Mm -hmm. The intermediary was Dr. Uh, was Professor Gaffney the guy that was doing the movie on the uh, empty box cars, the empty box cars. And we flew together to Skopje. Now, Skopje was a very, very uh, active Jewish community until 1943. And uh, there was Sephardim, there was Sephardic. And in, uh, on March 9th or 10th or 11th uh, of 1943, they were loaded on the trains. Well, first they were, they were put together in, a, in big, uh, big uh, warehouses, uh, toba tobacco warehouses, uh, which are empty and in, in the winter. And they were concentrated there. And then they were put on the trains and went straight to Treblinka. Treblinka was a death camp. And in Treblinka, the time between arrival and one's death of gathering, being gassed, was probably four to six hours. And they didn't have a chance to survive. They didn't have the possibility of doing work and trying to wait for the end of the war to to be liberated. I so, think in many of your uh, previous stories, yeah. so, sorry to interrupt Rabbi Asa, you discussed and you explained how other concentration camps, not that anyone is good or better, 
but in other concentration camps where there, there were economic and industrial developments like in Auschwitz and other areas, they had more, more chances to survive yeah. because of the labor that was needed. At least for four to six months right. before being gassed. Right. Anyway. And Treblinka had none of these things. It no. was just a simple uh, yeah. plain old uh, death camp. Gas, gas chamber and crematorium. By the way, Treblinka has no no structures, no monuments, uh, no buildings, nothing. Just thousand rocks planted into the ground and each rock bears, bears the name of the city and the country <coughs> from where the people came. Anyway, I was in, I was in Skopje to bring a Sefer Torah and the amazing thing was that the synagogue which was destroyed in 1943 and there's been no Jewish life in Skopje for 55 years, 60 years. In summer of 19 of 2000, the synagogue was rededicated, and we Reopened. brought we brought the Sefer Torah for that particular Shabbat and occasion. It was a glorious, glorious evening and day and weekend and with symposiums and with all kind of uh, festivities celebrating the renewal of Jewish life. So the phone call came an hour, an hour ago from Rabbi Collins who was the person from Pasadena that gave us the Torah to take to Skopje, Skopje. and from Mr. Mizrahi who is not, excuse me, who is now the director or the chairman of the Jewish community in Skopje. In Sk Skopje. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Mizrahi informed me that in Skopje they've just dedicated a year ago, two years ago, the fourth largest Holocaust museum in the world. Wow. I was totally unaware of it because we always talk about uh, Washington DC, US Holocaust Museum or Wiesenthal in Los Angeles or the, in Berlin, but in Skopje... Which is a fairly small uh, city compared and, to and, other metropolitan... And Baltimore. poor, pretty poor, but the government had allocated the funds for that particular Holocaust Museum. Which is an invitation and a good example to follow by other countries. Exactly. Like Romania and Bulgaria and everybody that uh, does not have a, a memorial, memorial yeah, uh, does not have a monument or place to, to remember the victims, yes. Yeah. And perhaps not only the victims of uh, the Holocaust, but also victims of their own, of their own people that died at the hands of exactly. other terrible <coughs> events in the history of the, uh, the yeah. particular countries. Yeah. And of course, the partisans, who were fighting the fascists. That's right. And there are individual, like in Sofia, Bulgaria, there's a, there's like a sidewalk, memorial plaque, saying that in this place, such and such person was killed by Gave the fascists. his life, yes. Yeah. So perhaps this is an introduction. Uh, explain to us how you want to tie in, or you want to connect this introduction of the uh, event that happened today with the idea of explaining to uh, young people around the world how evil starts in a very simple, innocuous way. <laughs> Since we're approaching the 10 minute, 12 minute margin for the stories that we're allowing ourselves not to make them too long, tell me how this introduction of today's phone call and everything that happened, uh, how does it connect to our idea of teaching how evil, how good people can do evil things. Thank you, David. Yesterday, which was Sunday, I had a couple of hours to myself, and I watched the Jewish channel of Los Angeles repeating the trial of Adolf Eichmann. Now, Adolf Eichmann was 
captured in Argentina in 1960-61. He was smuggled to Israel and he was tried as sort of like the symbol of the genocide that Germany had committed against the Jewish people. Obviously, there were more important people than Eichmann in, 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 in the infrastructure, but Eichmann was captured and Eichmann was responsible for the um, uh, logistics of the Holocaust. In other words, in 1940, in January of 1942, there was a conference in 1Z, Berlin, which is a suburb of Berlin, 1Z. There was a conference of all the uh, important uh, people, everybody but Hitler, because obviously he didn't have to go to meetings. I mean, from the army, from the navy, from the, uh, from the intelligence services, from the SS, from the, uh, from the Gestapo, and the decision was to liquidate the Jewish people in total. In other words, up to that time, the killing, the murdering was sort of like local affair. Now it became the policy of the Third Reich. Now, I'd like to tie this conference with the possibility of transforming a normal human being, people like you and me, into becoming animals or killing machines or indeed part of a system that destroys entire nations, entire race, entire uh, group of undesirable people. Well, it happened with the Khmer Rouge, it happened with the Armenian genocide, and uh, more recently in Africa with the Hutus and yes, all these Yes, and things. in Sudan, Sudan, in Sudan today, yeah. and there are many, many examples uh, genocides. Yeah. And um, in the next segment, Story I would like I would like to talk about an experiment that took place in Iowa, USA, about uh, 12, 15 years ago, and I think that this is indicative of how we can take a normal child, a normal person, and make him or her a killing machine. Thank you. Thank you very much. So stay tuned for uh, story number 28, which is going to be a very, very interesting story in, in the psychology of human beings, how easily we can become great and how easily we can become destructive and uh, inhuman to other humans. Thank you, Rabbi Asa. My pleasure, David. Thank you. Shai mai vrea, shai mai vrea drăguță ană, Ca să te îmbrac mai până framă. Să-ți cumpăr, să-ți cumpăr cercei mai ană, Dar eu n-am de unde mai coadară. Auzi, dragă fata, nechi dragă, Aseară bolivă ta niceană. Și acum nu sparale, să-ți cumpăr sandale, Buzunarele sunt goale bani Mai apoi drăguță Încă o băncuță Și băui în colinicuță Dar